everybody, Jeff here from TheRevitKid.com. I'm finishing up BIM After Dark Volume 1, The Redux. If you want to check it out, I'm actually in the process of finishing the Lumion section of the video, which is pretty exciting, pretty fun stuff. Um, the video you're about to see is actually from this series. Uh, it is a tutorial directly, directly grabbed from the video series, so if you're interested in it, uh, feel free to check out the link below for more information or bimafterdark.com uh, for more information on Volume 1. Also, if you like these videos on YouTube, uh, feel free to subscribe below. Um, I'm going to plan on producing quite a bit more YouTube content as well as stuff on the blog, so if you're into that and you want to subscribe, feel free to check it out. If not, enjoy the video and talk to everyone later. Many people think that you have to go outside of Revit to create some really cool illustrative diagrams, especially in architecture, but the honest truth is that you don't. And there's really cool ways to make them look like vector graphics, and the reason I call this big diagrams is because Bjork Ingels kind of made it um, extremely popular to really take the party to the next level and do these three-dimensional um, vector-based diagrams. And so you can do them in Revit, and so I want to sort of run through the process of how you would create them. First thing I have here is there's a sample file for those of you um, who, who have the sample files um, called Sample Project Tower. And we're not going to get into the tower too much, but I just wanted to show a couple examples of some diagrams. So you can see this is just a diagram showing um, a rectangle, and then this was pulling the insides of the rectangle and, and sort of warping it and how, how we made that form. And then from there, you, you get to the actual tower, uh, which is right here. And so just a couple examples there. But the big thing is you'll notice on the outside and the outlines of this diagram, there's a really nice sort of thick, thick line. On the inside, there's a thinner line, and then it's got this really nice ambient occlusion and so on and so forth. And so let's just run through the process. We're going to create a little diagram. So this is the diagram that we're going to make. It's pretty simple. It's just basically two rectangles, and then we're twisting the rectangle, and then we're throwing in these nice arrows. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to set up the views so that you have a little bit of a thicker line and some interesting things going on. But already you can see it's a pretty neat looking diagram. So first, let's go through the process of modeling these. It'll take a couple seconds, and then, um, and then I'll tell you about these arrows, and then tell you about the view settings to really make these diagrams look awesome. So I'm just going to model next to it, and we're going to model in place. So I'm, I'm just in a, uh, this is the diagrams version 2019 uh, sample file. If not, you can just start a brand new file and just go into a 3D view, and we're just going to create an in-place mass. So we'll go to Massing in Sight, and we're going to do In-Place Mass. And the reason I'm using a mass as opposed to just simply modeling in place with the generic components is because you can see we're sort of twisting. And actually, let me get out of this so you can see. We're actually twisting the shape, so it is kind of a funky shape, and it's non-coplanar. So we're going to want to use a mass for that. Plus, I think it's kind of cool for people to see that. Masses aren't always sort of these, these myst mystical objects that uh, have transparency and don't get used for a bunch of things, um, like they show even in that image. Uh, so let's do an in-place mass. I'm going to call this diagram 2. Okay, we don't have to be the exact same size as this one. We're just going to rough it out. I'm actually going to model it fully in 3D. One, thing, one of the things I like about 2019 is that you have, um, you have your levels in 3D, and it just makes things uh, modeling in three dimensions a lot easier. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle, and I'm going to use uh, draw on work plane so that I don't have to deal with selecting work planes and whatnot, and I'm just going to draw this on the first work plane. So I'm going to draw one square. So there's our rectangle there. Okay, then I'm going to take that rectangle, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to create form. And we're just going to pull this up to a certain point. Now I'm going to go to my top-down view. I'm going to draw another rectangle, make sure it's set to draw on work plane and level 1. And then this is going to be our slice through the building. Again, we're just kind of free-flowing it, so don't worry about being perfect here. But you can see there we have just a rectangle flowing through the building. Select that, create form, and we're going to pull this up. Looks like it's up at least a little bit here, which is good. All right, and then we'll click Finish Mass here. You'll notice that this mass that we just created is transparent. So what we want to do is we want to apply that material, apply a material to it so it's not transparent when we get out of it. So let me go to Edit in Place. By default, the mass uses the, um, a default form material. 
but if we select these objects, we can actually apply a material. So let's just apply a material. I have one in there called diagram mass. If you want to create a new one, just create a new one saying create new material. And we'll just call it diagram mass and make sure it's nice and white because we're just gonna do a white diagram for now and click okay. Now you'll see we got ourselves a diagram. I'm actually going to uh, take this face. I just tab to the face. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit here. Okay. Now, what we're, go what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna actually want to join these together. And so when we're using, um, when we're using silhouette edges, which is what we're going to make uh, the edges thicker with, um, you want to make sure these are joined so that, that Revit knows that it's considered one object. So we're going to click join. We're going to join these two pieces of geometry. And now you can see we've got a nice line. And these are considered one object. So we can click finish there. So we've got one little mass. <clears throat> now I can take this mass. I'm going to select it. I'm going to type CO on my keyboard for copy. And then I'm going to click and drag across to here. So we're making one copy of this. Okay, so now if I select this mass, I can edit in place. I'm actually just gonna modify this one piece here. So if I tab a couple times, I'll eventually select the, the original form. You can see it says form element on screen. If I select that, I'm selecting that original rectangle I drew. If I say X-ray, it's gonna allow me to dig into gonna allow me to dig into the pieces of this so notice how when I click x-ray it gives me it gives me these points and curves or points and, and lines that we can use once I click x-ray I can actually tab and I can grab this whole top piece so I just tab to the point where I'm grabbing the the four edges and this top face okay so now what I want to do is I want to take this and I'm gonna to go to my top view I'm gonna slide it over a little bit just grabbing the red grip and then I'm going to type RO on my keyboard, which is rotate. And I'm just going to give it a little rotate. Let's go about 20 degrees. That's a little further than I want it, but that's okay. So now you can see what we did is we made this form. It's this sloping form. And click finish. So that was it. That's all we did to make these diagrams. Pretty simple, right? I'll move that over a little bit. So now let's talk about this arrow. So I highly suggest that you model arrows in your diagrams and, and different elements, like let's say you want an asterisk or something like that. And there's one way to do it is to simply uh, model in place. So let's do this. Let's go to architecture, component. We're going to model in place and we're going to create an arrow. So generic models, arrow one. So let's go to the top down. I'm just going to create an extrusion. And let us draw an arrow right here. I'm just going to literally sketch out the shape of an arrow. And all I'm doing is using my sketch lines to draw an arrow. I'm going to take this line. I'm going to use DM on my keyboard to mirror over the middle. Just a little tip there. Same thing with this. I should have done it too. DM. And then you could trim this. TR for trim on your keyboard. So there we go there. And now I'm going to give this a material. And I have one in here called Pink Arrow, I think. If not, you can make one called Pink Arrow and give it a nice little magenta if you want. And then click Finish. And from there, you can actually bump this up as much as you want. So it's one foot thick, maybe we want to make it two feet, so on and so forth. So I definitely suggest you do stuff like this when you're trying to accentuate something. And the other thing I like to do too sometimes is if I get out of this arrow and I create similar, or I go to Architecture, Component, Model in Place, I also like to make asterisks, so and then we just sketch out an asterisk. Now if you want, these are things you can probably just make families out of so you don't have to sketch them every time, but I'm just doing this quickly to show you how simple it can be to do. This isn't even going to be the best of the best, so let me just take this, do the same thing, select these corners type DM on the keyboard, mirror this over. Yeah, this isn't the most, this isn't the, the best asterisk I've ever drawn, but that's okay. Mirror this over and then take all this and DM mirror this over. And then maybe here we give it a new material. I'll just say create new material, asterisk, can't spell, that's okay. And we're going to give this maybe like an orange or something fun. Click finish. 
And there we go, we're signifying something with that. So that's one way you can create air arrows and, and, and different things to accentuate your, your design. Um, I suggest you do this for sure, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this other area, this other thing over here that you see this arrow I'm using is actually a railing. So this is a modification of something I've used in the past for um, path of egress travel. And I've just kind of used it for diagrams. And so this is a railing type. So if I just create similar, I'll select it. I'll say create similar. You can see it's called railing diagram arrow. And if I just draw a little arc here, click finish. You can see it's actually on the ground right now. So we'll change the level to level two and jump it up 20 feet, give or take. And there you go. The cool thing about this diagram or this arrow um, is that because it's a railing, you can actually, um, it can host a topography as you saw in the earlier chapters. So you can take an arrow and you can show some really cool site diagrams and whatnot. And so it's definitely pretty neat. Um, I don't want to get too far into the family creation of this. If you have the sample files, you can dig into it. If you want, what I'll do really quickly is I'll, I'll just check out, um, show you how it's created. Um, if I go under the actual railing, I say edit type. And then I go to your baluster, uh, baluster placement. I have a family called dash and a family called arrow. And then they have their own settings. And then the dash family looks just like this. If I go down the left here. The dash family is what you think it would be. It's a simple, it's just a rectangle with some width, length, and height parameters. And the arrow family is exactly what you think it is. It's an arrow family, but it also has uh, a little bit of an array so that you can fix that spacing if we wanted to. So if you'll notice on, uh, on here, it looks like it's overlapping a little bit. So what we could do is we could actually go in and we could try and try and mess with the spacing. Hopefully it doesn't blow up while we're doing this here. Yeah, sometimes it blows up. So, uh, you know, you got got to got to mess with it a little bit. You can shrink or, or or bump up the spacing, but you can see from back here it looks pretty awesome. So that's how I model diagrams. Um, you can do this early. You can even do this after the fact. You can sort of fill in the design afterwards. And then the last thing I want to do is just talk about sort of the visual of it. So if we if we look at this, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm using my 70-50-20 rule. I have the view set to shaded. Uh, one thing you'll notice is if you go from hidden line to shaded, even with white elements you tend to get a little bit better ambient shadows. So here I go again, hidden line and shaded. Notice how much more ambient shadows you get. So I'm typically using um, ambi uh, shaded views for this type of stuff. And the last thing you wanna do is you also want to turn on your silhouette edges. So now silhouette edges are gonna be the actual outsides of your, of your element. And if they're combined, it's gonna give you some nice, nice edges. So if I go wide lines and click apply, you're not gonna to notice too much of a difference right now, but if I crank up the scale, so we're at eighth inch, if I go to one inch equals 20, or even more, let's go one inch equals 60, look how much fatter the edges are. are, are. So if I zoom in, you can see that there. The other thing I like to do is, I like to create a line type that's for these diagrams. So if I go into my manage, additional settings, and line styles, I like to create a new one and I call it diagram edge or diagram outline. This way I can control the fatness of it without affecting any other piece of the project. So right now you can see our wide line is at five. So let's do something like eight for the width. Click apply, okay. And now when we change our silhouette edges to diagram outline apply, you can see we get this really, really nice fat line. So look how nice of an image that's creating. Let me actually move this out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna hide the levels. So I'm just gonna hide in view category for the levels. And of course, if you another way to control the, the thickness is to control the scale. But you can see what we've got here is some really, really neat looking diagrams in Revit. So these can be exported and utilized as, as is.